All right, so this uh, experiment is where we're gonna synthesize an ionic compound, specifically magnesium oxide and magnesium nitride by combusting uh, some magnesium ribbon, okay? So one of the first things that we wanna do is uh, take the mass of an empty crucible, just put that on our digital balance here. I've got my mass of uh, 22.18 grams. I'm gonna add to that a length of about 15 centimeters or so of the magnesium ribbon. Uh, just take the magnesium ribbon off the spool and I've kind of rolled it into a loose ball here. Uh, I'm gonna put that into my crucible and record the mass of both the crucible and the magnesium ribbon together before combustion. That's 22.48 grams. So I'll put that on my ring stand. I've got that equipped with a clay triangle so that I can light a Bunsen burner and heat it rather intensely from underneath. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I start with my uh, Bunsen burner here. Everything is closed. The little wheel, flywheel on the bottom is closed, as is the stem on the top. Uh, I can open the gas valve, right? Uh, this handle is going to point in the direction that the gas is moving here, so you know that this is open, but I don't hear any gas coming out because I've got that flywheel at the bottom closed, which present, prevents any of the gas from coming out. So I'm going to make sure that's all closed before I put my lit flame over the top of the mouth of this Bunsen burner and then I'm going to slowly kind of open that valve at the bottom that allows gas to come out. Once I catch a flame, this uh, wheel on the bottom is going to allow me to adjust the height of the flame. More gas means more flame, less gas, less flame. I'm going to control this down to somewhere about that five, you know, four or five inches of a dirty flame. It's a choked flame because there's no oxygen coming in to feed that flame. So right now I can tell that this is choked or that this is a dirty flame because of the fact that it's kind of yellowish orange in color. I wanna clean this up and give it enough oxygen to make it a nice hot, clean blue flame. And I'll do that by spinning that stem. By spinning the stem, some air is allowed to come in and we feed that flame with oxygen and we see a more complete combustion. Once I get a nice kind of tight, inner cone here. That's what I'm looking for. I want to see a, a clearly well-defined inner blue cone. Now that gives me a nice hot clean blue flame. I'm going to start heating my crucible from underneath. Um, it doesn't matter that this might be a, a little bit tilted here. You can engineer something to make that a little flatter if you need to. One of the easiest ways to adjust the height of my uh, ring stand here once I've got a flame underneath is to use my crucible tongs. Uh, to support the front end of my ring stand and I can lower that down into the hotter part of the flame, which is right at the tip of that inner blue cone. Uh, that's when I know I'm gonna be getting some pretty intense heating here. This is gonna take a few minutes, uh, but then we'll be looking to see the magnesium combust and you should see that happen pretty rapidly. Uh, and it's gonna be very obvious because there will be a really uh, bright white light that's given off. It's an exothermic reaction. All right, so at this point, you can see a highly exothermic reaction, uh, giving off lots of heat and light there uh, as a result of that so that we know that uh, chemical change has taken place. So we're going to assess a couple of other variables to confirm that we've actually had a chemical change here in the production of an ionic compound. And we'll do that once we've given our crucible a chance to cool. So at this point, we're gonna take the final mass of our product here. Uh, again, you can see after the physical change and the chemical changes that have gone on, it looks different than what it did before. Crucible and our magnesium products after the reaction, 22.60 grams. So after a sufficient amount of time, we've given our uh, crucible a chance to cool. Again, inside the crucible, you can tell that we have this white, now brittle, solid, you might even notice that there's little flecks of yellow uh, that are inside of there. Those would correspond to the magnesium nitride uh, that has been formed. Our primary product is that white brittle solid. That's the magnesium oxide. Uh, another property of ionic compounds is that they are electrolytes. So if I take my solid after I've kind of crushed it up uh, with my stir rod, I can put that into a beaker. And if I add a little bit of distilled water to that, uh, just enough to kind of create a mixture. I can test the electrical conductivity uh, of this mixture. And if the products that were made are in fact ionic, uh, then they should conduct electricity. This is a very simple circuit board here. It's a conductivity tester that has a battery hooked up. These two metal prongs at the end, uh, because they are apart, 
the circuit is not complete and therefore the light bulb does not light. But if I touch it to something that is electrically conductive, like my ring, the red light turns on here. So uh, if I put the conductivity tester into our solution, our ionic products that should be electrolytes should turn the light on, just like we see here. Red light comes on whenever it's in solution.